Hello, and thank you for once again joining us at NWA Vet Presents. As of yesterday, President Biden has signed the PACT Act into law. The act has opened the door for veterans who were deployed in the Gulf War and afterwards to receive compensation for a list of over 20 illnesses and conditions which the VA considers presumptive from toxic exposure. The PACT Act also includes two new presumptives for Agent Orange, expands the areas for Agent Orange exposure, and includes three new areas for possible radiation exposure. We're going to start today with seeing what the VA considers to be toxic exposed veterans. According to the Code of Federal Regulations Number 38, or 38 CFR, in Section 1117, the following are considered to be toxic exposed veterans. First, you have Vietnam era herbicide exposed veterans. Of course, you know we're talking here about Agent Orange. As you will see on the next slide, the areas which are presumed for Agent Orange exposure have been expanded. Next, we have veterans who are considered to have been exposed to radiation. There are those who had on-site participation in a test involving atmospheric detonation of a nuclear device. It also includes veterans who occupied Hiroshima and Nagasaki from August 6, 1945 until July 1, 1946, and veterans who were POWs in Japan after Hiroshima or Nagasaki. It also includes veterans who served on active duty in the Southwest Asia Theater of Operations during the Persian Gulf War, and in a moment we'll see exactly what countries this applies to. Also, veterans who served on active duty in a theater of combat operations after the Gulf War or in combat against hostile forces after November 11, 1998. It includes veterans who were present on Camp Lejeune, for at least 30 days between August 1st, 1953 and December 31st, 1987. Understand that your presence on Camp Lejeune must be substantiated somehow, whether that be from actually being based at the camp, TDY orders placing you at the camp for a certain number of days, or other means of proving your presence there. The last three listed here are new with the PACT Act. All refer to radiation cleanup operations. If you are a veteran who served in any of these places, or know of a veteran who served in any of them during the time frame listed, you're considered to have been exposed to radiation. Now for Vietnam era veterans, these locations have been included in the presumptive areas for Agent Orange exposure. They are, first of all, Thailand. If a veteran served on any US or Royal Thai base between January 9th, 1962 and June 30th, 1976, they are eligible to file for any of the Agent Orange presumptive conditions. In Laos, if they served in Laos between December 1st, 1965 and September 30th, 1969, they are presumed to have been exposed to Agent Orange. Also, if they served in Cambodia at either Mamat or Krek in the Kampong Cham province between April 16th and April 30th, 1969, if they were in Guam or American Samoa between January 9, 1962 and July 31, 1980, or if they were on Johnson Atoll or they were present on a ship calling at Johnson Atoll between January 1, 1972 and September 30, 1977. If you were present in any of these places, you are now presumed to have been exposed to Agent Orange and you can file a claim for any of the presumptive illnesses or uh, conditions that are linked to Agent Orange. There is a list of such conditions on the VA website. And there are two new presumptive disabilities being added for Agent Orange with the PACT Act. These are hypertension and monoclonal gammopathy. If you don't know what monoclonal gammopathy is, it's a condition in which abnormal proteins from plasma cells in bone marrow are found in the blood. People with this condition may have a greater chance of getting a serious disease of the bone marrow and blood. The effective date of the act is immediate for DIC claimants and for veterans who are either terminally ill, homeless, under extreme financial hardship, over 85 years old, 
or are capable of demonstrating other sufficient cause that the effective date should be immediate for them. Notice that these uh, conditions will only be re retroactive for DIC purposes. That is because uh, for DIC purposes, the surviving spouse must be able to show that the veteran passed from a service-related illness or was 100% permanent in total for at least 10 years. Again, these are the three areas which have been added for presumptive exposure to radiation. They are the Inuitoc Atoll cleanup, the radiation cleanup at Palomares, Spain, and the radiation cleanup at Thule Air Force Base, Greenland. Moving to the Gulf War and beyond. These are the countries covered for burn pit and airborne toxin presumptives. As you can see, owner after August, 20, uh, August 2nd, 1990. Veterans who performed active military, naval, air, or space service while assigned to a duty station in, including the airspace above, Bahrain, Iraq, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, or the United Arab Emirates. That's only after August 2nd, 1990. They are considered presumptive for having been exposed to burn pit and airborne toxins. Beginning on September 11th, 2001, the other list of countries were added to the list. So if you were in Afghanistan, Djibouti, Egypt, and you can read the rest of them, then you are considered to have been exposed to burn pits and airborne toxins. So the diseases on the presumptive list. I'll list them here and in the next four slides along with the year they became effective. These illnesses listed on this slide become effective this year on October 1st. And you can read this slide and the following four slides to see what has, what has become effective and when the effective dates will be. This chart gives you the timeline for the phases and the actions. Let's pause and say this as you look at the timeline. Even if you need to file for a disability that does not come effective until 2023 or 2024, go ahead and file for it now. Do not wait. If the claim is filed now and is disapproved because the disease is not effectively presumptive, there is a possibility under the court findings of Nehmer versus the VA, that the effective date of the claim will be when it was originally filed. No guarantees. It's going to be up to, to the VA to determine what they're going to do about that, but the possibility is there. Now, as for the expanded health care portion of the PACT Act, the VA is currently suggesting every veteran apply for health care with the VA Health Administration. The phone number to do so is 872 222 8387 and the VA Health Administration will be much better able to answer any questions about eligibility for health care. Hopefully this brief presentation has answered some of your questions about the PACT Act. If you have other questions, please reach out to your, your local veteran service officer. Like always, if these videos prove helpful, please subscribe so you'll know when the next one posts. In addition, you can find us online at nwavet.org or on Facebook at facebook.com slash nwavet. Like us on there and follow us to keep up with what's going on. And you can always email us at info at nwavet.org. As always, y'all take care and watch out for each other. NWAVet, out.